opening day of deer archery and it's about three o'clock oh boy this was a project bringing these cameras in here i never self filmed myself but what an undertaking it took me a good 45 minutes to get set up just in my tree stand where it usually takes me like five minutes um, I wasn't able to hunt the morning because I had to work. So there's a full moon or near full moon now. Um, I never really have the good luck in the mornings deer hunting with the full moon. So if I had any luck in the past, it's always been in the early afternoon. So um, like I said, it's around three o'clock right now. I'm all set up, ready to start. And um, hope to get some action for you. I have a doe tag, so I can shoot either a doe or a buck. This is uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, special regulation county, so um, they start earlier. Um, so um, I'm just hoping for the best. I think I'm stinking up the joint because I sweat it so much, but I spray down pretty good, but that usually doesn't matter. Um, I've had a lot of luck in this one spot here. I've killed seven bucks here. So, um, if I get any action, I hope I get it on camera for you because it's going to be very difficult for me to aim the camera, move around without getting spotted by the deer. This is a, this is a challenge, boy. So, hang in there. Hope to get some action for you. I just shot a real nice eight-pointer. It's standing on the left side of me about 20 yards away, but I can't shoot it again because when I shot, my bow hit my stand and my string came off the pulley, the cams. So I didn't make that good of a hit on it. Um, so I'm just sitting here waiting until it dies. Okay guys, good afternoon. Today is Monday, September 19th. Um, on Saturday, opening day of deer season was my first attempt to try and self-film <laughs> an archery hunt. Well, that went horribly wrong. What a calamity of errors. And the deer didn't read the script either. But, in the end, I got her done. Uh, let me start out by saying much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, I had two cameras out there, one GoPro on me, and uh, I have a pretty good Canon uh, regular camcorder, you know, to move around if I see the deer. But um, I got set up. I was also I went in the tree stand at two. And it took me a good 45 minutes to get set up. I mean, it was just so much stuff between my backpack, my fanny pack. I use a climber tree stand. Um, just getting everything set up and getting all sweaty. <laughs> it was a good 45 minutes. So, 2.45, 3 o'clock-ish, I'm ready to go. And the first couple of hours, nothing happened. I did see a couple little raccoons. Um, other than that, nothing. Then around 6 o'clock. I'm on a mountain right outside of Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, all the times I've hunted this spot for the last 20 years, 90% of the time the deer come from up the mountain, come down towards the evening. Well, the deer came from behind me and they came out of this super, super thick picker patch. It's probably about a half an acre big, this picker patch, and they came right out of it. Um, at first it was just a doe. She was literally 10 yards behind me. So very hard for me to move. And to make matters worse, I was sitting. I was not standing. So uh, I'm stuck. This doe's feeding towards me. And I 
I'm trying, there's no way I can get a shot. She's on my right side, I'm right handed. I can't shoot on the right side, plus the camera's on that side. Uh, but I'm trying to reach over very slowly and turn on the camera, which I was able to do. But then I had to spin the camera totally around <laughs> to get on the deer, which I did. Um, so, she's feeding around me right like 10 yards away, right underneath me. Um, for a good five minutes. Then this humongous buck comes out of the picker patch. Like, I don't score deer, but just from what guys say on TV, this looked like a 130, 140 class, humongous eight or 10 pointer. Um, thick rack, wide, super tall tines, just, I mean, I, there, there would be a buck of a lifetime for me. Um, so he comes out, he stays back, he's about 15 yards away. <clears throat> not alert of anything but at one point he did look in my direction and did the little up and down looking at me up in the tree stand but he still cautiously just fed right around me then behind him comes another eight-pointer very nice respectable deer um, you know I'll, I'll show you a picture of it because that's the one I shot um, maybe a maybe a 15 inch spread um, but skinny rack pure white horns uh, nice love it I mean great deer for me and uh, uh, but this buck walks almost right underneath my tree stand and comes a little bit to my right but he's behind me now with I use a climber tree stand my bow I have a bow holder on it and usually it's on my right side well because the camera's over there I had to move the bow holder over to my left side and my floor of the tree stand is offset about three inches to the left of my seat because I have to have clearance to pick the bow up and then move it around. If, if they're super in line with each other, straight in line with each other, there's no clearance. And to top things off, I usually, I'm right-handed, usually the arrows are on the right side of the bow um, for a right-hander, I had to, um, and my sight's on the left side, so I had to take my quiver off and just detach it while I'm in the stand, which I don't like doing because there's several times in the past, numerous times in the past, I've had a second shot, and I like to have those arrows right there on my bow with me. But either way, detach it, put it in, and put my bow holder in. Uh, slowly while there's three deer around me trying to pull my bow up out of the holder and then I have to move my arm on the other side of the armrest and then slowly try to position myself to, to my left side to turn around and to put the bow back there which I do everything's cool and then I go to draw back and I do notice that uh, you know the the floor of the tree stand is still offset out three inches so I have to lean out as far as I can to get clearance and draw the bow back and at this point the buck's only five yards away right underneath of me and take good aim shoot I didn't feel anything with my bow but the shot went high and like almost um, maybe four inches down from the spine and I was aiming for like mid chest area and um, I didn't even know even what happened, like how I could have missed and threw off that shot. Well, apparently, I'll tell you about the deer in a second, but apparently I guess when my bottom cam rolled around, it must have just glanced my uh, and hit the floor of the, of the uh, tree stand. So it threw my shot off. And I didn't feel it that much, but I guess it must have. And because, now here comes a deer, the deer runs trots maybe 15 yards away and just standing there with my arrow in them and I could see it still even though the shot was thrown off it was not a bad shot it was up on the back angling down towards the front to the opposite shoulder and it was pretty deep and I have a lighted knock on there too I use nocturnal knocks and he's just standing there and his tail's flickering and uh, he's got a little bit of a shake every now so I know he's hurt bad and I know he's gonna die but He's standing there for like 15 minutes, and I was going to put another arrow in him, and I go to get another arrow, and here I notice my string is off my cams. 
it got knocked off. So I definitely know the cam definitely hit the floor of the uh, tree stand, the bottom of the tree stand. So, and to top things off, my peep must have flew off the string and <laughs> went somewhere. So I don't know where that went. Um, but I'm watching this deer now and it doesn't care. The other, the buck and the doe, the bigger buck and the doe trotted off. And um, so I'm calling and texting people, you know, I got this deer, showing them the deer. It's still standing there 15, I don't know, 15, 20 yards away just with the arrow. And um, so then he starts walking off and he walks back into this thick picker patch. He only made it about another 25, 30 yards. And I didn't see him drop, but I heard him drop. And then, but I could see the lighted knock and the lighted knock stopped moving and stuff. So I assumed he was dead, which all in all, like I said, it was a good, still a good shot. I was still able to pull it off, thank God. And, um, you know, total distance between me and him was maybe 40, 45 yards. So, uh, I got my, I, um, even when I got it out, it was, the, the lungs were perfect, the heart was perfect, but the liver was shot, so, I'm, you know, I put it through the liver. So, I, um, call my son up. I'm about 10 miles away from home. He comes up, gives me a hand. We have a hell of a time getting it out of this picker patch. We're trailblazing, trying to find, and we're getting pickers in our butt and our hair, our back, legs everywhere. It's just pickers galore. So either way, we get it out. I'm a nurse. I work night shift. Um, I got the deer out of the woods by like 8 o'clock. Call my butcher up. He's going to wait for me. Thank God he was still there. And I uh, got the deer down to him by 9. And I was able to get home, get a shower, get into work on time. So everything worked out. Um, but, like I said, what a calamity of errors. Other things with the cameras I encountered that I didn't expect. So, um, it was definitely another learning experience. Um, I, uh, uh, I'm sure I'm going to go through more growing pains trying to self-fill myself. Uh, but, I want to give a plug for Evercom. Oh my god, this is the second year I use this uh, lure and or uh, you know, hide your scent, and I'm telling you, swear by it, the stuff works. Had it on my boots, had it on some of my clothing, got up in the tree stand, put up a little bit on my tree stand, uh, but when I was down in uh, on the ground, I also bought the Evercom dough urine. Now, it's not an extra sure, it's just a regular dough urine, and I, I poured it in my little scent, scent bombs, and I had brand new scent bombs, poured it in there, and I hung them on, um, you know, bushes, just, you know, 10 yards away from my stands for a cover scent. And um, the buck that I shot actually went right up to that scent bomb like catnip, and he was in love with it. He was just sitting there licking his chops. He was eating some little leaves and stuff. I mean, no more than 5, 10 yards away from me, if that. And... Um, Neither the deer, all three deer, didn't know I was there, and all three deer walked over my uh, footprints that I, you know, my trail that I used to get in. So they didn't know anything. The stuff works. Um, I mean, I do all the other stuff about washing. I use um, Dead Down Wind to wash my stuff in, and um, I spray down before I go in. Even when I'm up in my tree stand, I spray down, and I really thought I was going to stink the joint up because I was sweating like a pig up in my up in my stand trying to get everything set. You know, eventually my sweat dried up, but still, I didn't. I can't imagine that I didn't smell. Uh, but that Evercom does work. Uh, this is about the fourth year or third, fourth year I'm using the Nocturnal Knox. Excellent. Love those Nocturnal Knox. Not putting down any other brand, but they just work for me. I carry a teeny little jeweler screwdriver with me in my pocket to turn it off um, when I'm, uh, you know, hunting with it or if I target practice with them. Um, so they're, they were excellent too. Um, actually today I had to, um, I use Lancaster Archery because I'm from, you know, obviously in Pennsylvania, close to Reading, and uh, they're one of the largest dealers here in America. And um, bought the bow from them four years ago and uh, everything's covered 100%. So when I get down there, I gotta get the bow timing, the strings put back on the cams, timing checked, they had to put another peep on, and here they found out that one of my lower limbs had a slight little splinter to it, uh, right on the edge. And um, so uh, they did clip it off, they put some epoxy glue or something, they said it was safe to use, but they just, to be safe they were going to order cams I mean not cams 
they were going to order uh, new limbs for it uh, through Hoyt and it would be covered 100% because they're bows as long as you're the original owner you bought it from them everything's covered 100% lifetime so oh my god great guys down there so whenever that comes in I'll get that changed out at the end of the season I still have a doe tag I'm going to hopefully <laughs> get better uh, coverage of uh, you know what hopefully when I shoot my deer or doe and um, but boy like I said I, I am a little bit more aware of things now and uh, the spacing that's involved with the having cameras and it, everything's just not set up to way I'm usually up in my stand and um, I can really appreciate now going hunting without cameras knowing like oh you have nothing to worry about because you just sit up in a tree stand shoot your deer <laughs> with cameras you got everything to worry about movement being number one top priority that you can't move if the deer are too close or you just got to be aware of everything but you know trying to turn on cameras and um well here's the other kicker i told you i turned my canon camera on and was, was i thought filming the deer yeah, I had it turned on. Everything was set. I have an external mic, a real good mic on it. I turned that on. I forgot to hit the record button. Ugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I basically got nothing on film. <laughs> so, that's why I'm here talking about it now. It was a very successful, fun opening day. Um, got my buck for the year. But I'm going to have fun. I'm going to have fun going and uh, trying to get my dough. And uh, hopefully that video filming event will be much better than this one so in the end got her done I have a few pictures I'm gonna post right now about uh, showing you um, the deer itself that I shot and it wasn't a bad deer I mean it was probably about maybe 170 180 pounds dry weight and uh, um, a nice eight-point rack like I said just great for me I love it and um, I don't mind getting my deer early I can get back to fishing if I after I get my dough and uh, you know open some time up for that again and uh, uh, it's what happened last year last year I got my dough and buck within the first week and a half or something and you know I went back to fishing so and then I'm getting ready for pheasant season so um, so stay tuned to my channel hope to have another deer dough uh, video for you soon and um, so thanks for watching okay see you guys